You're watching Bread and Roses. Welcome. Hi everyone, I'm Marin Amazi. And I'm Fadi Bors Puya. In this week's program, we're going to be talking about the sexual assault and rape of the likes of Harvey Weinstein and Tariq Ramadan, as well as the wonderful Me Too campaign that is exploding across the globe. Interview this week is with Stasha Zajovic, co-founder of Women in Black, Belgrade. Can I just say, she is the most formidable woman uh, you will ever hear from and meet. Uh, I'm just so excited about this interview. You're going to love her. Our insane fatwa is uh, by a Mufti of militia Mufti militia against the internet and yes. how corrupt it is. How sane. Yeah. And uh, our slice of life is a wonderful new association of uh, free thinkers in Tunisia. Don't go away. Stay with us. Now, the media reports have been full of reports on Harvey Weinstein, a film producer who has been exposed as being someone who has raped and sexually assaulted a lot of women over many, many years. Over 50 women have come forward now. And these are famous women, you know, women who you would think are not the, you know, representative of those who are seen to be powerless. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it shows how widespread this is. Yeah, and the structure of Hollywood and media industry you know, it shows that there's so much uh, pressure and misogyny that institutionalizes uh, misogyny that allows men to have that privilege of uh, asking for sexual f favor and demanding, and I think there's a right to, to do that. Um, this is spread into uh, many different countries as well. So it's not only in Europe and Britain we've had the a Me lot Too of campaign, yeah, yeah, Me Too it? campaign. The hashtag spread every, Me Too. Uh, spread it, but in Iran, for example, a lot of actors have come out and they, they've complained about sexual assault and um, and the pressure from the powerful uh, media uh, owners uh, for sexual favor and uh, and rape, allegation of rape and sexual assault and of course it's not just in the media uh, you know it's it's something that's really widespread the me too hashtag has gone viral and i find it interesting because there are lots of people who are saying they didn't realize how extensive this problem mm. is and I, I find that quite astonishing mm. I think if you're a woman you know how extensive it is I think actually there isn't a woman who hasn't had some sort of uh, experience of this sort maybe not necessarily rape but you know very um, difficult um, sexual assaults harassment intimidation and of this sort I think there isn't a woman who hasn't faced that and What's good about this is that this is really coming to light now, isn't it? And also it's given um, um, strength and confidence to a lot of people to come out. And it's, it's become an um, issue that society is debating and everybody is talking about it. And I think um, hopefully this would set a standard uh, across the world that, uh, you know, to be a woman doesn't automatically allow men to ask for sexual favour. Um, because of the position of power, and I think that's a privilege uh, that uh, uh, male and male society um, um, think they have. Mm. Yeah. And I think this whole uh, situation has helped other women come out in other situations too. For example, we now know that two women have come forward uh, in uh, uh, with allegations of rape and assault by Tariq Ramadan. The you know the the darling of uh, of many who consider him the an Islamic Islam. uh, reformer, mm. whereas really he's an Islamist uh, who speaks very eloquently uh, in English, of course, uh, not when it comes to him speaking in Arabic. Yeah. It's very clear who yeah. he is. But this this sort of uh, uh, the more religion, the more misogyny uh, of institutions of religion there is, um, you know, the the more. Um, sexual assault um, it becomes prevalent. I was shocked, Marianne, when I saw um, the article in The Independent that an Islamist or Islamic lawyer mm. was claiming that um, if um, Islam and Prophet Muhammad was dominant, his narrative, there won't be any of these uh, sexual assault against uh, a woman. And that's shocking that the Independent newspaper mm. would dare to publish such rubbish. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, especially when you look at Islamic states and countries where religion has the upper hand, in fact, there is an increase in violence against women. But what it is is that that violence is c completely legal. And so it's not considered a crime very often, you it's know, from marital rape and even domestic violence and, and all of that. And, so and you, you could see that in, in um, southern sort of Baptist belts in America, you'll have that. In, in, in Catholic Church and uh, you know where there is religious organ a particularly all organized religion they exist uh, the position of women the situation of women and the spread of misogyny and the threat to women being uh, it, it increases significantly yeah. and one of the things that we're going back to the Tariq Ramadan case is you know Caroline Fouret who's a uh, French journalist she's written extensively about him about his double speak and also you know she talks about how he's so obsessed with sex as are so many uh, of those who yeah. are you know portraying themselves as religious they're actually very obsessed with sex and you do find pedophilia and a lot of rape and sexual assault amongst people who are giving this sort of impression and she was saying that she's heard of other reports of women were very afraid to come forward but now that we have this you know brave woman who heads uh, Libera Gatis, uh, her name is Henda Ayari, she's come forward uh, with uh, allegations of rape uh, against Tariq Ramadan, that's important that other women come forward as well and I think with this Me Too campaign and all the women coming forward around the Harvey Weinstein case it's going to help women be able to speak out. Yes, and, and hopefully this will set a standard um, to advance, uh, um, you know, the fight against misogyny and for women's rights. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things I want to just mention here is that, you know, there there is a lot of victim blaming when it comes to the question of rape and sexual assault, and women are blamed for it because of how they dressed or because of how they behaved and so on and so forth. And obviously, one of the things that the Me Too campaign is pushing is that these are illegitimate questions, they're unacceptable. But you've got Douglas Murray, uh, who's this right-wing right commentator. commentator, who's written something where he's talked about how this sort of pushback against these forms of assaults and all is a... a, a Se uh, what's he called it? Sorry, he's called it a sexual counter-revolution. And he's basically saying that uh, it's pr prudish and it's, you know, uh, women going over the top and feminism torturing men. And again, how outrageous is that really, you know? And uh, Douglas Murray is someone who's always defending women's rights when it comes to Sharia courts. But obviously, if there are Tory MPs doing it, uh, you know, or uh, he's he's not so pro women's yes. rights then. Don't it's cross the line. Yeah, that's so, what they're saying. Don't so, cross the line. Uh, and and I think again, this is really important, making clear what is and should be unacceptable when it comes to sexual violence and rape against women. Stasha, it's a great, great pleasure to have you on our program. Uh, there's so many questions I want to ask you, but first let me ask you about Women in Black. It's a source of inspiration for many women across Thank the globe. Uh, tell us a bit about what you do and why your work is so important for so many people. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you for your visit, for sharing your experience, etc. Yes, also we are inspired also for uh, your initiative, especially for uh, Maria Mehali Lucas. Uh, uh, we established contact uh, 26 years ago. It was uh, um, some of the most important uh, uh, our international contacts, with, of course, international solidarity contacts. Yes, yeah, women in black. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is feminist anti-military organization. We started in '91 as a reaction uh, against uh, aggressors, politics of Serbian regime, and uh, we organ yes organize a lot of uh, street actions. Some of the our main activities I make visible women's resistance against war, nationalism, uh, sexism, and also of course all kind of discrimination. But mainly we organize uh, more than. Uh, organized more than two two thousand street action uh, 
I think maybe 70 percent or 60 percent of this action is uh, uh, about uh, accountability. It does mean account, uh, about war, uh, war and war crimes committed by Serbian regime? It is according to our. Uh, main, one of the main ethical principles, not in our name. Uh, what does mean? Yes, since the beginning, yes, we, we, we are consequent to this policy. Uh, we don't want to uh, we, we, we don't want to fed up, we don't want to uh, give up with our uh, permanent uh, uh, demands to Serbian regime, despite the fact that they they are now on the way of uh, uh, European integration process, but uh, they are the same. Uh, they are uh, like the uh, same people in, in IT's, etc., etc. One of the other, we organize also developing a lot of uh, new models of transitional justice based in of our experience and also taking some international experience, for example. But we developed our own uh, based on our reality. This is the sum of the models of transitional justice, alternative way of transitional justice. For example, I think this unique exam example, visiting place of crime committed by, uh, uh, by, by Serbs, it does mean uh, create, uh, or create new uh, policy of feminist ethic, uh, um, you know, to uh, address us since the beginning to victims of war committed by ours, anyway. <laughs> And we established great, great contact with community uh, victims in whole ex Yugoslavia. That's why we, you know, during the war, we also used to visit, travel each other. And now, of course, we organize together a lot of action. We are very, very present in, uh, in whole ex Yugoslavia, especially near, for example, in eastern part of Bosnia and rural zones, uh, uh, working with the women war survivors of, uh, in this case, they are Muslim Bosnian women. Who, who, whose husband were killed, who male uh, yeah, member of family or killed by Serbs. This is this make uh, uh, this kind of policy made. Uh, I think one very very uh, important and very uh, um, deep, very very sincere links between us. Uh, and also we create uh, a lot of informal solidarity network between women, for example, women beyond borders, uh, survivors of war victims, uh, uh, avoiding this terribly NGO policy, reducing women to uh, passive role of victims and patronize them. And uh, we establish contact among them uh, uh, in whole region. Uh, the so-called uh, solidarity mothers for peace, uh, they are women who transform their uh, uh, big, big tragedy in uh, common work for peace, just peace against uh, impunity, etc., etc. For example, this is the also common encounter, gathering between uh, among them and also visiting place of crime, uh, uh, respect uh, victims not only of my nation, of our victim, but also victims war victims everywhere beyond uh, their ethnical or uh, mm, mm, religious uh, background etc etc this is really important and also we run an activity in our mo model of transitional justice is monitor uh, 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 trials in a special court for war crimes. What does mean? Uh, almost 15 years in Belgrade, we have this special court for for war, special court for uh, war crimes. Uh, we don't. Of course, we are not satisfied. But anyway, I will speak how we uh, how we develop, how we build our policy of uh, feminist ethic of care and responsibility. Until now, in more than 10 years, we passed. We spent. Uh, 750 days sessions in this area. and what that, uh, always stay together with uh, witnesses who are who were and are so brave courageous to came to Belgrade the place of very very difficult for them the place of source of their uh, uh, um, tragedy it's, yes and uh, we are, we are always with them, not only in in uh, in court, but also outside of court, in in hotels, etc. And they visit us, and yes, it was the big big lessons. I, I, I think it is the created this 
great uh, links between us, some kind of uh, at friendship, but more than friendship, sisterhood, big, big trust among us. And uh, it's create possibility to, uh, <laughs> to challenge each other. Uh, because, of course, I'm feminist uh, uh, activist in Yugoslav, uh, uh, from the Yugoslav time, and atheist also, and mostly they are believers. And I waited for to uh, express them my differences, my big differences uh, in comparison with them. It was very, cre very uh, this without this work, without this creating this space, without any uh, project uh, framework, it was possible because we visit each other in our in their homes. We don't need money for this, for example, in Bosnia, in case of Bosnian rural zone, for example, in other parts, because we we organize in their houses, uh, in their places, if they don't have their places, and they we prepare together uh, uh, food or <laughs> they prepare food and so and and we, we don't speak only about crimes, we speak about feminism, we, uh, about freedom, autonomy, also about LGBT rights. And some of the issues is very difficult to speak, especially the role is not religion. That's why this uh, gathering is very important, you know, to re-examine some of their, you know, some of their um, problems, some of their ref uh, some of their shelters during the war to overcome these problems. I don't know. Uh, and... Uh, um, Yes, yeah, so tell me yeah. also about why uh, this uh, uh, round table of yours, these discussion and workshops you're having on fundamentalism, why do you find that being so key right now? <laughs> but, uh, you know that uh, religion and uh, uh, faith and uh, religion and nation uh, was were used during the war as pretext to destroy the, and divide Yugoslavia and uh, a lot of people uh, were manipulated and they are manipulated by religion they are abused and used by, uh, religious, uh, by a religious leader of course we know but for other sides for faith for a lot of women who suffered a, a very very big tragedy it is in their private life it is some kind of uh, um, consolation and I met a lot of women because for me as atheist, I'm from atheist family, etc. But I also learned from them, you know. They are not uh, devoted to organized religion, to their mosques, but they are so. Amongst them, they, they practice this kind. Anyway, there are also other very harmful practices I, I noticed in whole on religion. And, uh, I, we have to create a space to re-examine this and so it is not, in this case, it is not uh, easy and this is, you know, more, maybe is, is uh, this is more difficult than, for example, in case of war crimes, in case of, uh, I don't know, anti-militarism, etc., etc., because it is something very, uh, very, very profound, uh, uh, rooted in their uh, uh, intimacy, intimacy and so anyway we will anyway because we use for example a lot of movies uh, 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 movies uh, uh, on I don't know from different backgrounds we use different method methods in, anyway yeah we, we work a lot of this but uh, uh, yeah you also at this um, uh, gathering of yours you talk a lot there are different activists talking about uh, the negative role also the church is playing now and uh, the mm -hmm. increasing uh, clericalization of society. Can you explain that? Yeah, it is. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't. I didn't explain. That is, I, I was speaking. I was speaking about uh, community victims. We mean community victims, but uh, <laughs> for, for activists, it's not good. But they are becoming activists, and it is very challenging. Put together activists, feminists, anti-military activists with the worst survivors. Anyway, is it is big, uh, big Big, uh, you know, source of knowledge, not only for 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 us as activists, but only also for them. It is the producing uh, feminist concept and feminist practice of uh, generating knowledge based on our experience, based on their problems. Anyway, this is the challengeable because in our network, a lot of activists in uh, our network is not only reduced to Serbia, but 
out of Serbia, but it is not easy to organize action. It is not so difficult. It is not so difficult to organize action against clericalization. But how to include other women? This is it is possible. This is my experience uh, creating. Bef uh, uh, Mm, creating space of, of uh, trust and uh, friendship, solidarity, and so. For example, uh, one of the, for me, big, big experience was uh, so encouraged the uh, uh, community survived uh, women, uh, in this case, from Bosnia and Croatia, especially in Bosnia and also from Serbia, to show their solidarity with the refugees from Middle East, etc. This is the big, big, also big. I think this is the yeah, the beautiful was big challenge because they are extremely traumatized people. How to face new traumatized people? And nowadays, for example, they are nighting together every year, nighting a lot of uh, uh, I don't know, a lot of nighting, knitting, knitting, knitting. I don't know for the uh, for winter. Uh, weather and so and uh, th thanks to this yes thanks to this uh, thanks to this uh, uh, space <laughs> for years creating and uh, always creating we also as women in black we were very um, easily uh, uh, chosen and uh, uh, proposed to coordinate uh, uh, I think this important uh, uh, um, this important uh, not initiative this important uh, yeah, event uh, and process of organizing process of uh, women's court feminist approach uh, uh, to justice. Shams, the Deen Shaman and Deen, there's two Deens in there, which is religion or faith. Deen, Deen, religion, religion, because you need to know how very religious he is. He has issued is a here? fatwa. He is the mufti of the Houthi militia. Of course, you got. If you're a militia, you got to have a mufti. If you don't have a mufti, and Shamsuddin mufti, you're not a proper militia. Adi, Adi mufti, yeah, you're not a proper militia. Oh. And he's issued a fatwa against the internet. No, no, not just internet. The Wi-Fi, <laughs> internet and Wi-Fi, <laughs> because yeah. it's corrupt, like we are. They go into people's so. houses, and if there are Wi-Fi and internet. Internet, they shoot them they and kill the you know, Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. <laughs> they said it's, it's, it's corrupt. Houthis are the ones who are actually sending out ballistic missiles these days. But that's, that's not That's corrupt. okay. That's, that's fine. fine. Militia is fine. Shooting around <laughs> is okay. Wi-Fi is corrupt. No Wi-Fi. It Don't reminds have... me of the Iranian regime rolling tanks over satellite dishes. Yes. You know, they like they want to kill even the inanimate objects. <laughs> <laughs> Military guys, you know, it's corruption. But they're Adina. Gun is fine. Internet is so bad. So wonderfully charming and religious. Insane fatwa, of course. Of course. A group of Tunisian atheists have come together and established the Association of Free Thinkers. It's now an established organization in the country. It's the first of its kind, defending free thought, atheism, secularism, criticism of religion. It That's sounds power. brilliant. And and defending uh, LGBT rights yeah. as well. And they've registered themselves uh, formally, legally in Tunisia. Power to the elbow, and this is one of the first um, recognized officially uh, in the North African countries, yeah. may they spread to Saudi Arabia, uh, many Islamic ridden countries. Of course there were um, organizations, for example in Turkey, um, they've had a history of atheist and secularist organizations, widespread officially. In Iran there's always been uh, a, a great movement, uh, a huge movement for secularism. And atheist movement in Iran is very strong, and nothing in Iraq and many other countries. But officially, it's been rec recognized and yeah, registered. There was in, also in one Tunisia. in Morocco, wasn't yes. there? Started by Imaditin Habib. Uh, of course, that wasn't registered, and that's what makes this so great. Is it's an organization that's been registered, and really, it's just defending everything from, you know, an end to religion, uh, religious education to. Uh, defending secularism to defending the right to criticize religion 
and uh, the activists of this organization were those who protested against the arrest of two young uh, people who were arrested in Tunisia for eating during Ramadan. That's right. So yeah. it's a continuation of, of so that very movement, so the, isn't the it? The pushback is a start. It is very strong in North Africa, Middle East, and Islamic religious yes. societies. Power to the elbow, as we, we said, them, we and, and well, them, congratulations, very and well done. Congratulations. Yes. Good news. We've reached the end of our program. We hope you've enjoyed this week's program, and we'll see you again at the same time and same place next week. Until then, goodbye. Bye. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream, and in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.